Hi, my name's Hudson, and I'm a geoholic. Just a quick note to express our appreciation for the 2021 Friends of the Program for their continued support. Please consider their products and services as they have special promos for Geoholics listeners. Aerotech Mapping, Inc., ATMLV.com, Advanced Geodetic Surveys, Inc., AGSGPS.com, Bad Elf GPS, Bad-Elf.com, Cobb Fenley, CobbFenley.com, Cyanic Automation, CyanicAutomation.com, Diamondback Land Surveying, DiamondbackLandSurveying.com, Get Kids Into Survey, Get Kids Into Survey.com, Land Surveyors United, LandSurveyorsUnited.com, Mentoring Mondays, Mentoring Mondays. Dot X Y Z, Monson Engineering, MonsonEngineering.com, Parkland Community College, Parkland.edu forward slash land dash surveying, Safety Apparel, SafetyApparel.us, and last but not least, Tiger Supplies, TigerSupplies.com. When I wake up. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hopefully it's the morning when you're listening. Let's do this, boys. No doubt about that one. Oh, yeah. How about that one, Shoots? I like how you talk back to the music. <laughs> You're like, yep, it's that's early, me. man. <laughs> oh, man. I, yeah, I'd walk 500 miles for you, buddy. Thank you. I would do the other 500 just would to you? end up at your door. But it's funny I won't drive to Gilbert. No, not at all. <laughs> Unless there's corned beef involved. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, and thanks for listening to episode 50, um, 50, 71. Ooh, my it goodness. is early. Shoots, what do you got for 71? I'm curious about this one. Walter Jones. I don't know if you guys know him. I we're we're getting, in the wo- getting in the weeds here a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but I was surprised to find out about him 1997 first round pick number six overall by the seattle seahawks he was a nine-time pro bowler four-time first team all pro and the seahawks have retired his number 71 so when you have your number retired you, you get an episode uh 2014 pro football hall of famer right on very good uh this is one of those early shows for us since our guest this week is across the pond as they say so we're back in pj's beat lab studio been a while buddy Welcome in. Glad you're here. I had to remember the code to get in. I know. <laughs> also known as uh, Producer Jake's Kitchen, but uh, good place to be. Thanks for having us this morning. Um, what else? Thanks for... Uh what else? Yeah, thanks for letting us invade your personal space. For sure. Yeah, is, we appreciate that. This is morning, one of the OG yes. studios, I especially know. for the international yeah. guests. Man, I, I, I got to get my brain on track. Here. I was surprised we were at the table instead of the counter. It, it just threw me off a little bit. So yeah. maybe that's where you're tossed off. I a little don't know. Bit, but you know how my brain works. Uh, how about that opening number, PJ? <laughs> All right, guys. The pro- pro- Proclaimers, I'm going to be, parentheses, 500 miles. The Proclaimers are a Scottish rock duo formed in 1983 by twin brothers Craig and Charlie Reed. They came to their attention in, in, in their 1987 single, Letter from America, which reached number three in the United Kingdom in the 1988 single, I'm going to be 500 miles, which topped charts in Australia, Iceland, and New Zealand. The Proclaimers have sold over 5 million albums worldwide, and that song, I'm Gonna Be 500 Miles, has been downloaded over 400 million times on Spotify. Uh, is it safe to say that the Geohawks will officially be a success when we hit 400 million downloads? I'd say so. I would call that a success. That, yeah. If we hit that one, I'm going to retire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Well, we might hit that by the time I retire. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, shout out to this week's highlighted friend of the program. This week we have Land Surveyors United, our good friend, Justin Farrow. So the uh, LSU community is a unique place where the juniors of surveying learn from the seniors and vice versa. They bridge the knowledge gap in the field and share experiences. 
LSU recently launched Smarketplace, which is a land surveyor's marketplace powered by LSU community marketplace vendors. Visit the various levels of the virtual mall to see what types of specials and deals their vendors are currently offering for LSU members. There is also a, a couple really cool pages with uh, surveying articles and one with surveying videos, um, just you know for sharing knowledge uh, with the next generation. LSU also recently started a member raffle on the last day of every month. Activate your member number for an entire year to win and get membership access to all the resources and apps free. Speaking of apps, while you're there visiting, be <laughs> sure to download the Geoholics app. Check out landsfairsunited.com where their goal is to provide a place where you can learn something new about land surveying each and every day. Every day. Every day. There's so day much day. information, so many resources on there. It's ridiculous. So be sure to check it out. So are whenever we, you say LSU, I just think of Ed Ogeron, like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta okay, say I got that yeah. voice right now, don't I? <laughs> so our weekly pod word for this episode is marketplace. I like that word. Yeah. I mean, it almost sounds like it should be three words, but I guess it's one word. So marketplace. Um, here's the deal. Listen every week. Make note of each episode's pod word at the end of the month. Email all pod words to us for that month, and your name will be entered into the drawing for that month's listener prize, which this month is a personalized watercolor painting by Connie Barrett. One more time, the pod word for this episode is... Smarketplace. Smarketplace. And I, I got believe it written down. This is the last episode of this month, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when you guys listen to this, you know, Sunday, Monday... Send us the four pod words for this month, and on Tuesday's show, we will do a live drawing. Is it four pod words or three? Because it's a short month. I don't know. I don't have to look at a calendar. <laughs> I don't have one in front of me. So however many episodes we've had in February, that's the number of pod words you need to send us. Let's catch up the boys here real quick. PJ, anything new, man? How's it going? I'm going to keep this quick, but um, this past weekend, we went down to Maricopa, and Will, um, McKenna's boyfriend and patron of the program, um, did some hang gliding. So we uh, teamed up with one of our friends of the program, Bad Elf, to um, provide some data. So more to come on this, but nice. we had, uh, let's just say we had a little GPS strapped to uh, old Wilbur when he was <laughs> flying around. So we got some cool data. I'm going to send it over to Dr. Nick, see what he can do with it. Maybe we can put it in some sort of cool something we can put on the website. I like it. Ryan, how got, about you? I got a question for you guys. Sure. I tried a new ice cream with Carrie over the weekend, and it was delicious. Uh -oh. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Like, <laughs> off the beaten path. It doesn't Ooh, have to be chocolate, path. vanilla, or something um, like that, because I'm going deep on this one. I had, like, this banana brownie thing. Um, yeah, that sounds good, too. It was really good. I mean, that's, like, off the beaten path. Like, all-time favorite, mint chocolate chip. Okay. The yeah. simplistic. Presley, too. Wow. Yeah. I'm just cookies and cream by a cookies long shot. Wow. Mm -hmm. They have a Ben & Jerry's Tonight Dough. Ooh. I've heard that, yeah. It's From got Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon on oh the front. Oh, my goodness. It is so deliciously Oh, wow. horrible for you. But huh. when you said bananas, I love fresh bananas in my ice cream. Yeah, yeah. And for sure. If if it's that fake banana flavor, mm -mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like the syrup. So, not so much. Yeah. So that was my excitement of the weekend hey. of, hey, I got some ice cream and it was awesome. Better than no excitement. Exactly. What about you, Kent? Um, well, let's see. The only thing really, I'm officially addicted to Clubhouse. Uh, <laughs> thanks to producer Jake, I seem to be on there at least six hours a day. Um, been inviting some other surveyors and geomatics professionals, which is good. Starting to build a little bit of a network. Um, we are officially on there. So if and when you get on Clubhouse, just search for at the Geoholics. And I'll be honest with you. I mean, there's not a lot of at least North American surveyors on there. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that I'm like one of maybe 12 right now. Yeah. And that's about it. It's the craziest thing. So we're definitely on the ground floor of this, assuming this thing continues to blow up. I think it's going to be a really good uh, platform for us to, uh, you know, promote the show and geomatics. So I am excited about that. Like and one it. thing I didn't mention earlier, uh, Bob Wesolowski just sent us another uh, very generous donation. Awesome. Via the thank you, Bob. Me. So thank, thank you, Bob. you, Bob, for that. We appreciate the continued support. This week's Safety Apparel Safety Share shoots what you got, man. We're talking about forklift injuries. Uh, OSHA estimates there are about 35,000 serious forklift injuries each year and around 85 fatalities. Uh, some tips to prevent forklift accidents. This is always good advice. Wear the right safety gear like a hard hat. Duh. Take a moment to look over the machinery before running it to make sure everything is working properly and there isn't any obvious damage. When lifting, center the load for even distribution and stability. Never overload. Follow the load capacity of your forklift. 
again, duh, awareness, avoid hazards like uneven ground, other vehicles, and overhead obstructions. Never raise or lower the forks unless the forklift is stopped and the brake is set. Uh, never tilt the load forward while traveling. This reduces stability of the load and operate at a safe speed. Mm, all good stuff. Yeah. Hey, and, you know, I, I haven't driven a forklift in 20 years, but. Or ever. I, I, did I never have I either. Did. I'd like to, though. I've done it when I was a child. And, you know, it was with my dad, of course. What about a Best Buy? No, they didn't have a forklift. They had a thing called Big Joe. Oh. And it, <laughs> it was kind of like a forklift. We need a, a safety share on Big Joe. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you had to do a, it was like six questions. And then <laughs> you, you, the guy like literally went like this and he's like, okay, you're certified. Yeah. <laughs> so I was pulling washers and dryers off of the. Did uh, did Big Joe ever give you a chin check? No. Oh, no, no, no man. No. That would have been no. bad. He was, the, he was not the torpedo. <laughs> All right, man. Let's move on with this. Uh, let's get to our guest today. I'm super excited about this and have been for a couple months. Our guest today is the one and only Chris Anderson. Who is Chris Anderson, you ask? Well, in my little world, he's a bit of a celebrity. Chris is a record-setting, hopefully I get this right, 22-time winner of the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling Race. Whoa. Chris is from, time. Yeah, from Gloucester, England, and was born at a local hospital, he said. Is that Gloucester or Gloucester? Gloucester. Uh, when he's not chasing a rolling wheel of cheese down a 45 degree hillside, his hobbies are riding motocross and playing rugby. I've been looking forward to the show for literally two months. Like I just said, so Chris, welcome to the geoholics. Thank you so much for being here with us. Hey, you're right. So a little bit of the the background here on how we found this is we were sitting around, what was it? Christmas. And we had Netflix on, we had just eaten our Christmas, um, dinner and we were sitting around the TV and we flip on the, the show on Netflix and we're all yeah. sitting around the couch watching this and like, this is the craziest thing we've ever seen. And we're like, we got to get in touch with this guy. So yeah, I believe you went to Instagram and yeah. did some research and sent him a message and here we are. We did for sure. So Chris, again, thank you for being here. So this Cooper's Hill cheese rolling, you know, how the heck did this become a thing? How long has it been going on? Um, it's apparently about three to 400 years. Um, <laughs> Some people think it dates back longer. Um, not sure how it started. They think it was a pagan ritual. Wow. Um, but we're not sure how it got changed to chasing a cheese down the hill. <laughs> Why not roll <laughs> Why cheese not? down right. the hill? Exactly. So how long have you been participating in this event? Um, I first run down in 2004. Okay. Okay. And um, you, was I right? You've, you've won it 22 times? Yeah. 22 wins in one second. Wow. And that's, oh. a, that's like a, that's a record, right? Nobody's won it as many times as you have. Yeah. I broke the record uh, two years ago, three years ago. Is cheese your favorite food? No, I don't even like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. So let's talk just a little bit about the format of the race. I mean, can anybody do it or do you have to like qualify to do it? How does that work? Um, you just turn up on the day. You got to get up to the hill early-ish, about ten in the morning, um, and basically queue at the top until twelve o'clock. Then they um, they pick twenty-two runners to come onto the hill, and then basically they start off with a call of one to be ready, two to be steady, three for the cheese. And then four, everyone chases it. <laughs> so, so in the episode two, we saw that you were out there and you were doing a little bit of practice too. How much? How much? How many times have you done it? I mean, you obviously you've done it more than twenty-two times because that's how many you've raced it. But how often do you get out there and practice? Um, when I was younger, I used to go up there quite a lot. Um, probably ten times before an event, wow. like the week before. Um, the, the older I'm getting, the less I go up there. So I haven't been up there nice since last year. <laughs> Those young whippersnappers still got nothing on you. I would have to imagine it's a young man's sport, right? <laughs> Running downhill. Um, yeah, you could say that. The young one's bank's easier. <laughs> and do you do like uh, men race against women or are there two separate events? Uh, there's two separate categories. So the women have um, just one race each year and um, the men have three races on the on the same day. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and in the uh, the Netflix documentary, uh, Flo Early, she's highlighted in that as well. Are you and Flo good friends? Um, no, I only know her through the cheese rolling. Um, I haven't spoke to her in over a year now. Um, we, uh, we got quite 
like close mates when we were filming for the Netflix mm. um, episode, but I've not spoke to her since. What was that like too when you were filming that? Oh, it was quite cool. They're a real fun bunch of uh, people, um, and they looked after me and my family. Mm. Um, and they offered. I I couldn't run it the year they were filming. That's why they done it with a bike flow. Um, and they offered to pay for my flights to go a, a day later on my holiday. But it wasn't more of the risk. <laughs> I thought when you guys brought up Flo, he was going to be like, oh, yeah, we've been married for a decade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've, man. We, we had cheese babies and all that good stuff. Uh, so got married on the cheese hill. Yeah, exactly. Well, can you tell us about Cooper's Hill? How high is it? What's the angle? How long is the race? Um, I am not sure the height of it, the, the length of the hill is 200 meters. Um, and the, the, the angle of the hill is, um, a one in two gradient. Um, in some places it's a one in one. And for me, the race lasts no more than 10 seconds. Um, <laughs> I think my quickest record time down there is like eight minutes, not eight minutes, sorry, eight seconds. Um, which is, He's for like, 200 meters, it's pretty quick. He's like the Usain <laughs> Bolt of cheese rolling. <laughs> That's crazy. It would, it would take me eight minutes. I'd be like yeah. traversing down the hill. Yeah, oh, yeah. For sure. I'd be walking about eight and like... To get up it for me. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point because there is a race that's... Like, there's a race for going up the hill as well, the right? kids or something, right? Uh, they do kids and adults um, mixed. So you have a winner from each, um, each sex, so male and female. Mm. Um, and my niece has won the uphill race three times. Oh my god! <laughs> and last year was the first time she ran down in the women's race. It's a family um, affair, boys. But yeah, low beat her. Yeah. So the for winning the race, I mean, wh- it, what is the prize? Is the prize literally the 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 cheese roll? Is that it, or is there more to it than that? The honor. Yeah. Yeah. The the block of cheese you chase is the uh, the prize you get. Mm-hmm. But um, where I live is. It's sort of a way, rite of passage, and you just become sort of a local legend. Oh, I'm sure. So, yeah, so you probably never have to buy any beer yourself, huh? Oh, uh, no, no, you still do. They're, they're, they're quite tight right here. <laughs> <laughs> but on the, on the day of the cheese roll, all the winners get um, free drinks in one of the local pubs. That's awesome. I was going to say, that's the real prize. Oh, I'm sure that celebration's got to be doesn't crazy. Even, he doesn't even like the cheese. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you do with the cheese then? I mean, do you, do you guys like sit around and eat it at some point? Does it remain a trophy? What do you do with it? Um, so pretty much everyone that I've won, my, I've given it around like the family, my, my dad, my father-in-law, they all like it. Um, but my dad still got the one that I broke the record which I broke the record in 2018, I think it was, and yeah. he still got it in his fridge at home. <laughs> I, do you think it's like, one of those things where, like, do you see anybody ever breaking your record? Uh, not for a long time. My, my son reckons he's going to, but I can't see it myself. <laughs> so it's safe to say we're talking to the goat. The goat, yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper's Hill cheese rolling goat, that's awesome. They, they need to come up with, like, a belt, like... Oh, like a wrestling or like world the champion, Nathan's, yeah. Like mustard belt right. that they have for the hot dog eating contest. Mm-hmm. They need to come up with a cheese belt like made for out you. of cheese wax or something. Yeah, like a baby bell. Yeah, <laughs> yep, good idea. So, uh, Jake mentioned earlier the the Netflix thing. That what is it? We are the champions, right? Yeah. And I've watched, you know, of course, watched that a number of times, and you, you know, various YouTube videos from past races, and I mean, it is literally chaos. How many people have died doing this? Uh, no one's ever died from it. <laughs> um, there's been a couple of broken necks. Oh my gosh! Um, a lot of leg breaks and arm breaks. Wow! But generally, it's um, cuts and bruises and sprains. Um, you probably get one or two leg breaks a year. <laughs> and how about for you personally? Anything crazy out of the ordinary as far as injuries go? Uh, first time I won it in 2005, I jumped up to celebrate at the bottom. I broke my ankle. Um, <laughs> and then in 2011, I think it was, I bruised my kidneys. Oh, that man. was um, that was pretty painful. Minor, minor, you know, injuries. <laughs> Nothing special. Yeah. Uh, the, the, kidneys, right. the kidneys one was really, uh, it took me quite a while to get over that. That was pretty painful. Oh, yeah, I bet. 
crazy. So what makes you so good at it? Um, I said, I'm just confident. Just, just run. And disregard for my own safety, I suppose. Yeah, that's definitely got to um, be a big part of it. But the older I'm getting, the, uh, the uh, more scared I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, it tends to happen as you get older. That's for sure. Once the kidneys got bruised, he he slowed down. A bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it looks like that hill. I mean, the hill is not smooth by any stretch of the imagination. It almost looks like there's ruts and holes and this and that. So do you kind of plot out the path you want to take before the race? Yeah. Every time I run, I try and just aim for the middle of the hill, um, try and stay in the middle. There's a little trail, um, and I just try and stick to the one side of it. And then halfway down, there's a big hole in the middle of the hill, and I normally fall over right now. As soon as I fall, and just try and get on my feet and just run straight for the middle again. So does that mean that each time you run, you're kind of looking for the same route, or does it change year to year? Because there's, there's a strategy in, in which way you run? I try and get to like the same sort of spot if I can, but I think I've had to start from like different locations on the hill each year. And generally, if I'm starting on one of the sides, I'll just try and get quick off the hill, like from the start, and get to the middle first if I can. Uh, when I bruise my kidneys, I stay too far over to the right hand side, and that's there's a big drop. And I, I, uh, I've done like a somersault and then when I stood back up, I was facing back up the hill and then I flew <laughs> down. I must've flew down about 30 meters and landed on my back. Oh my mm. gosh. And, then, and there are no concussions, and still one. at least not confirmed concussions. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been, I've been knocked out two or three times when I've won it. Wow. So when, so, when you cross, it. when you cross the finish line or when most people cross the finish line, are you typically on your feet or are you still in some sort of rolling formation of some sort? Um, I generally roll across the line, but that's because the local rugby club are the catchers at the bottom of the hill hmm. and they all want to smash me if I'm on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, uh, I try and hit the floor. Oh, that's great. That is awesome. So, do you, do you plant the cheese like it's a rugby ball? <laughs> no, you you can't get near the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, like, talk about race day. You know, you wake up that morning, and like, what are you thinking about? What do you have? What's your like game day preparation? Uh, I go to the pub first thing, have a breakfast. Um, I I normally have one beer and then sort of walk up the hill, hmm. and then I, I just really sit on top of the hill for two hours normally waiting to race that's quiet confidence boys yeah for sure and there it seems like um there's a bit of a what's the word i'm looking for presentation like before the race um i've seen on, on some videos you know this guy dressed up in a certain way and he's like maybe saying the the cooper's hill prayer or something like that i don't know but it it, it seems like it's a uh, I don't know. Like I said, they've been doing it for a hundred, maybe three hundred years, so they've got it pretty well figured out at this point. I think the word you're looking for is ceremony. Ceremony, yeah. ceremony. It's like yeah. Yeah, they, have a, they have a master of ceremonies. Master of ceremonies. Um, yeah. He wears a white coat with um, blue and red ribbons. Yeah. Um, but he's the guy who starts the races. Is that your retirement plan? No, no. no. <laughs> you talk about I'll how you. Your uh, your son, you think he thinks that you're going to break your record? Um, would you be okay with him running and, and and participating in the races? Yeah, he's um he's eleven, the oldest one who thinks he's going to win it. Um, and I've like kind of showed him the way down there since he was about seven years old. So <laughs> learning from never, the he's never place. ran full speed down in it, but he's run down it a couple of times. So how long until he can participate in the junior races? Um, so he can do the uphill races now, but he's not allowed to do the downhill until he's 16. Okay, so he's still got some time to go. Yeah, he's still got another five years yet. He's got some practice but time. He's unlucky because, like like me, I'm uh, quite short, and he looks young. <laughs> Whereas if you look a bit older, like there's no oh, there's sort no of ID check. <laughs> ID check. So there has has been a couple of 14 year olds who have won it in the past. Oh wow. Mm. Sneaky breaking brothers. the rules, yeah, yeah, <laughs> under uh, protest. 
So th- to talk a little bit about the post race celebration. I'm envisioning like everybody, you know, after the race is over, you know, everybody just going to the pubs and having a, having a go of it. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah. So you got to you got to walk the uh, two miles back down from the hill to the closest pub. Um, and generally, I don't buy a drink in that in the pub. Um, <laughs> have a, I, I used to go and get absolutely smashed and have like quite a lot of beers, but again, the older I'm getting, I I'm normally a bit battered and bruised. The first thing I wanted to be doing is going home and having a shower and sort of uh, <laughs> like relaxing a bit. Oh man, that's awesome. So unfortunately, I believe I read the race in 2020 was canceled because of COVID. Um, is there one scheduled for this year or has that been canceled as well? Um, it's still penciled in at the minute, but uh, there's been no, no announcement yet as to whether or not it'll be running. I'll be very shocked if it does go ahead this year. So if your son um, ever does pass you, you can just be like, ton, I had to miss a couple of years because of this whole pandemic. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You, you got an, a built-in excuse. He'll have an asterisk by his name. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I don't think he'll ever be here. The, 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 ever, since I last ran down at the hill's changed a lot already. Like, there's a couple of bit more big holes in it. Really? And how, what is that? Just because of like rain and erosion? Yeah, just like torrential rains has caused a couple of like lines down the hill, mm-hmm. and just it's quite stony underneath the, the soil there. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So I'm curious. Um, this might be a little deep, but what kind of life lessons can you take from uh, participating in an event like that? Um, I don't know. Just life for a living. So when these when you have these sort of events, just go and enjoy them. Uh, I just, I enjoy anything dangerous. So when it comes to cheese rolling motocross, you just got to throw yourself into it. And if you get hurt, you get hurt. And you always, uh, have you always worn the motocross jersey? Like from the first time you did it, it's kind of like your, uh, your trademark at this point. Yeah. I, I used to wear, um, a wolf, wolf sport, um, motocross jersey and they gave me a bit of sponsorship <laughs> back in the early days. Um, gave me some like free kit and some shirts. Nice. And no. then, I um, got sponsored by a security company and um, another clothing manufacturer company who do motocross kit. No cheese. So they look after me with kit. I got some messages from, um, I can't even remember who it was now, but I, I never responded to it. I just thought, I weren't, weren't sure if it was real. So I just sort of stayed away from it. Mm-hmm. And talk about mentorship for a moment. We saw in the, the Netflix documentary how you took Flo out there and kind of showed her the lines, and you talk about going out there with your son and showing him the lines too. Do people reach out to you as kind of a, a, because of your success and ask for help like that to take, go out there and talk about what it, what it means to be a champion and how to win the race? Yeah, a few people have asked um, to give them some tips and show them the sort of which lines to try and aim for, but... The, the, one, the thing I tell most of them is that if you haven't got the bottle to run from the top, you're not going to win anyway. So It doesn't you matter where you're running. If you can't run and, and do it with the confidence, then it doesn't. everything else goes out the window. Yeah. You got to go balls you to need the to walls. Have the, bottle to, the, the, the top of the hill is like almost vertical to start with. Ugh. So like the first 10, 15 meters, you've got to just throw yourself into it. And if you're still standing up by 25 meters down, you're, you're in with a good chance. <laughs> I'd have to admit, I mean, it's got to be pretty much like physically impossible to literally stay on your feet all the way down the hill. Yeah, I mean, you're probably way. going 20 miles an hour. I mean, can a person actually run 20 miles an hour? I, I have no idea. On but, that terrain and downhill, but there, the variables of it, no yeah. way. The cheese goes down there at about 70 miles an hour. Um, and in 2018, I got hit in the back by the cheese. Oh, oh my wow. god. <laughs> I don't know how quick I was going, but it was fast. Oh my god. That's Did that leave a pretty good sized bruise? Um no, it, it luckily it hit me right in the uh, in my butt. So oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it didn't really bruise up. Um but I did tear my calf that year. Oh mm. man. So. Now with your motocross stuff, uh have you done anything with that professionally or is that just a hobby for the most part other than No. Uh, just a hobby. I'm not good enough to uh, go any further than the level I'm at. Well, they let you ever take a, a, a motocross bike down that hill? 
Or would you even want to? It's probably so steep. You you wouldn't get down on it. I've, I've been down on a push bike. Um, mm. and I got about a quarter of the way down and I was over the handlebars. Yeah, maybe up it would be cool. Yeah. Um, it's physically not possible. <laughs> no, not a push Too bike, steep. but a motocross, yeah. Again, again, you'd get 20 meters really? at most. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's that steep. Oh man, we got to get yeah. to this hill and check this thing out. Yeah. Wow. So, I, well, I guess just don't do it this way. This is some. This is something I've always wanted to ask somebody that's this good at something. What motivates you, like to do it next year, to continue just dominating? Is it just that that pint at the pub afterwards that feels so good and tastes so good, or um, what? What's the motivation? I just I used to do it just because I used to just enjoy doing it, and it was real good like fun with the crowd and everything there and then people started saying oh you're never going to break the record and then the motivation for me was to beat the record and uh, i got i got my goal and so now like 2021 if if they have the race are you going to race again and is it just motivation of continuing to build that record and make it insurmountable yeah i just want to my my plan is to do well try and win one each year if i can and the year that i don't win any i'll stop mm. i'm curious but did, did I, you I'd say i'll stop but if i if i uh <laughs> go up there i'll probably still run down know me <laughs> yeah i can't say no did anybody else in your family were they were they you know cheese racers or were, were you the first one no 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 one else has done it i'm the first wow crazy well, let me ask you this then. Uh, this is a question we ask every guest on our show. Do you have a mantra that you live by besides go after that cheese? No, nothing. Um, <laughs> like I say, I just like anything dangerous. Um, so maybe just anything I can. If you fall, pick yourself back up and keep running down the hill. Yeah, keep keep your head up and keep running. Don't bruise your kidneys. So I'm curious about this yeah. one then. As a uh, professional cheese racer, um, what's the meaning of life? That's a deep one. Ah, so, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so no, enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I've already got one. I was going to say breakfast at the pub sounded the best. Of We're this, headed this there right day. after this. Oh, Having a breakfast say. at the pub. <laughs> yeah, that sounded better than running down a hill and flipping uh, over. Well, it's even better when you're not paying for the breakfast. Oh, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm race day. I'm normally too nervous to eat. Anyway, I'll buy a breakfast and then half it goes to waste. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So like on race day, when you show up at the pub in the morning, are you like a celebrity? You walk in, hands up in the air, like, I'm, I'm here. It's on, boys. Uh, all the locals know me. They all say hi, but that's about as uh, as wild as it gets. <laughs> so they keep they keep it low key. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Chris, I know you're uh, you're at work right now, so we don't want to keep you. Uh, is there anything else that we maybe haven't touched on that you'd like to uh, like to talk about or get out there? Um, not really. No, I think you've pretty much covered everything. Very good. Well, thank you so much, and uh, be safe out there. We'll uh, we'll circle back and chat again. Yeah, send me a message if you guys are going to come up. Yep, we'll do that. We'll do that. Well, I, I'm going to get your address. We'll send you uh, send you some Geoholics uh, swag, so you can represent. Cool. You can wear that. You know, if oh, they there have you it go. for 2021. We might have to pay for that. Maybe we'll be a sponsor. You yes. never know. Just the hat. That's fine. We, we don't. That'll need come it. off real quick. <laughs> 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 It'll be legendary. All right, Chris. Well, thank Probably. you. Thank Probably. you so much again. We, we we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Nice one. All right. Well, thank that, you guys. Thank you. You take care. Uh, sure. That's a wrap, fellas. Short and sweet on this one. Uh, exactly. Didn't yeah. want to keep Chris. He was at work. So uh, definitely another value adding friend making show yeah Good. and you're if you're listening and you're probably wondering what the heck are we talking about what was all of that go yeah. check out we are the champions episode one on netflix um listen to this first obviously and then check that out um <laughs> and they'll go hand background. in hand exactly yeah. it'll provide some context for what you just heard but it is one of the crazier things it really is it really is and he's like a totally unassuming 
smaller. He said he was a smaller dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't I haven't watched the the documentary. Oh my gosh! Well, now when you watch it, you're gonna be like, I know that guy. He, yeah. He's got a good build to fall down a hill, and really, it's more falling than it is running and being able to fall in it's, a way where you're like not somersaulting. Gonna... And I, I'm sure rugby helps him with that. I yeah, it's imagine. it's a similar type thing to be able to be durable like that without wearing any sort of. That's pads. a good yeah. way to describe it, though. It's almost like strategic falling. Yeah, and that's what I was kind of mm-hmm. wondering too when we were asking the questions on like uh, you go like how much strategy is where am I going to go versus let me just make it down quickly. I wonder right. if like a gymnast like Simone Biles would be good at that like just flipping down the Probably. hill the whole way. Yeah. Oh man. Now we, we're going to have to. insanity man. We're going to it? we're gonna have to send the Americans over to it take down so the cheese cool. race. When we fly out we'll have to have uh, Ryan will you do it on our behalf? I can. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm you're the youngest, Jake. You're the yeah. most, I'll have to like, go in the junior races. You're the most malleable. How, of, that, that was pretty funny, too, when he was talking about how some of the juniors, how these people, you're supposed to be 16, but yeah. there's no, like, checking or anything like that, and yeah. these 14-year-olds will go up, and they look older. Ugh. Just well, classic. It just goes to show the kind of, like... Um, laid back. Yeah, community <laughs> event, like... Yeah, for sure. I, I was trying to do the math, because I think he's, like, early 30s or something like that. And he's already won it 22, 22 times. times. Well, but they, well, they all three they, races. They do three races yeah. every yeah. year. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So, uh-huh. so he, yeah, said he doesn't win one. I'm like, so surely he, he didn't do it at eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. he wins at least one every year. Can you imagine? Like, I think some years he's won three. That, you're barreling down that hill. You win the first time. I'd be like, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. But he goes right back up. Yeah. He's like, let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other racers are like, damn it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought you were done. Yeah. yeah, I'd be curious if we would talk to someone else who, like, maybe the second place or the third place guy that usually finishes behind him, yeah. what they'd have to say about, like, yeah, I just we don't know what to do. Like, we can't beat him. He falls so much faster than, ever, than everyone else. <laughs> well, there was the, he said he'd get second place one time. I want to yeah. know who beat him that one time. Does, oh, he, wow. does he like despise that guy or is he like, you're all right, man? It's like exactly. the changing of the guards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Well, short and sweet. No, let's, I let's like Let's get it. on with our day. I can go back home and go to bed. Right. <laughs> All right. So when you're checking out, uh, when you're checking checking him out, be sure to check out the Geoholics website, that being the Geoholics.com. Man, my brain's just not functioning this morning. It's early. Follow us on all social media outlets by searching for the Geoholics. Maybe even do this. Make it easy on yourself since you're already going to be going to LanceRaidersUnited.com. While you're there, take a sec to download the Geoholics app. If you're interested in being a guest on a future show or have content suggestions, please send us an email at info at the Not only would we love to hear from you, but we're always looking for the next big thing, as they say, and that could be you. Could be. Please be sure to support our awesome friends of the program every chance you get. Be sure to mention that you're a geoholic for the VIP treatment. Pay it forward. Add value. Make friends. The proclaimers. I'm going to be 500 miles available everywhere. Most importantly, everyone, be safe and healthy. For you, shoots. I was going to say, you're tired this morning. (laughs) (laughs) Out of my mind. Oh, man. Once again, thank you to our friends of the program, Aerotech Mapping, Inc. at ATMLV.com, Advanced Geodetic Surveys, Inc. at AGSGPS.com, Bad Elf GPS at Bad-Elf.com, Cobb Fenley at CobbFenley.com, Cyanic Automation at CyanicAutomation.com, Diamondback Land Surveying at DiamondbackLandSurveying.com, Get Kids Into Survey at GetKidsIntoSurvey.com. Land Surveyors United at LandSurveyorsUnited.com. Mentoring Mondays at MentoringMondays.xyz. Monson Engineering at MonsonEngineering.com. Parkland Community College at Parkland.edu slash Land Surveying. Safety Apparel at SafetyApparel.us. Tiger Supplies at TigerSupplies.com.